Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Tuesday. And we are doing some tidy up tips because not every Tuesday I'll be doing tidy ups, but I have been a little uh, in the tidy up mode, as you may have noticed from my uh, last video that I posted. And so um, I thought today would be fun to do yet another tidy up because I actually have had a lot of inquiry about this topic. So welcome, welcome. Thanks, Belinda, for being here. And Shirley and Sue, Lorraine, Mary B, Renee, Victoria, Kim, it looks like folks are hopping on and saying hello. Good to see you guys, Bobby Ann. Hello, hello. So today I want to... Um, dig in a little bit about my absolute number one tip for organizing your photos. Now, for some of you, you're like Lauren again. <laughs> yes, again, because uh, I think we can never um, be told, uh, you know, enough how to get ourselves organized and our pictures organized because that's the foundation. That's the crux of getting our scrapbooks done and finished is really having a handle on our photos. That is the baseline, right? Is, you know, kind of that really lets us take off for all these other things we want to do. So yes, I am going to talk about uh, one of my favorite things. And yes, they are on special this week in my shop. Um, and actually, it's kind of a multi-part process. So I'm going to share a little bit more about that. Anyone who is new here, I just want to say a big welcome. These are all the places you can find me. And it looks like, yeah, Ellen's here. Welcome, Ellen, Carolyn, Janice, Beverly. She made the live. Um, Tina, Tanya, Amy's here, Lori. Oh, so good to see you guys hopping on. Um, so welcome, welcome. Deb is here. Pam is here. Kelly, Lori, so good to see you guys. Um, thanks for saying hello and uh, being part of the chat because, oh, as an aside, so I got the message loud and clear. You guys are like, Lauren, don't like the ASMR stuff. We want to hear you. We want your instruction. I got it. But you know, you got to try things before you know what works and what doesn't work. So um, the last video I posted a week ago was just on a really simple page design. And I actually used ABC stickers in that, which is my current promo in my shop. But that is also going to uh, continue for the rest of today. And um, but they're like, Lauren, we want instructions. So I got it. And I will probably do a voiceover for that video. So just stay tuned and um, just keep an eye out for that. Okay, so <laughs> thanks for the feedback. I always, always appreciate your feedback. I appreciate that so much. Okay, um, also just a quick other tidy up tip is if you did not see um, my video that I put up on YouTube, I believe it was on Sunday, check it out. One, one second, I'm going to just grab my box over here. Check it out because I talked about my new, whoops, ABC storage. Oh, look at that. Hold on. Let me get rid of this so you could see this a little bit better. So this is my new ABC storage. And I was realizing I wasn't getting to my ABC stickers enough. So I am trying something new. There's a video on this. I didn't get that. Did oh, you Siri, again? Siri, stop. Um, so I... <laughs> I am trying something new and I actually, so far, I'm loving it because for me, tidying up, keeping our things organized really is about getting to it easily and then using it and then putting it away easily, right? Wouldn't you agree? Like that really is kind of my philosophy around my craft room. So had to check <laughs> this out. Um, and, uh, I know I got some feedback from some of you that were like, no, I like mine still in the sort and stash binders, or I have them different ways, or I have all kinds of manufacturers and I've got them in accordions and all different kinds of things. So uh, thank you all for sharing your tips as well. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, so it is cool, Deb. I really, I, I'm enjoying using this. 
Okay, and and the folders. So there were a few of you who were asking where are these folders. I did put the link up on that video. Sorry, for, I don't understand. Um, Siri's just talking, talking so much today. Hold on, let me put this back up. Um, so I did put the link back up on that video in case you're wondering about the pockets. Phew. Okay, so guys, let's jump in and talk about photo organization because. Like I said, really getting your organ your photos organized is kind of the base for doing all of our scrapping projects, right? So um, I it took me a long time to kind of really understand how to organize photos. And then there was one little thing, you guys, I know if you've been following me, you know what these are, but truly. This is the one thing, my biggest tip for keeping your photos organized and, and always having a reference. So I'm going to go into kind of two ways I use photo folders. And I also want to kind of share, and, and like I said, the, one of the reasons why I'm coming back around to this, one, it's January still, so we get to take advantage of that New Year's resolution to get things organized, right? So let's, <laughs> let's do, do that. But secondly, there's also people who are asking, well, just exactly how do I use them? So I'm going to share kind of my two ways that I use photo folders because they're a little different. I can use them one way for my backlog of photos <laughs> like these, and then I use them another way for digital photos like on-demand print. You guys know I like having a photo printer right here in my craft room so I can print on demand. And so there's a kind of a different process that I use for that. So I'm going to dig in and share a little bit more about photo folders. So first of all, I just want to mention anybody who is new to this, these are, it's a product that I designed and developed. I think about now it's been about five years that I've been using them, maybe a little longer. Um, and I thought, you know, I just, I'm so tired of digging in my photos like this and going, now what, what, what were those photos? Like, this is just so not helpful. When you see a stack of photos like this, like this is just so not helpful. And even with dividers like this, I mean, you have to have so many dividers in here that um, it, it still wasn't helpful, even using dividers. So what I ended up coming up with was a little, kind of like a little mini folder. And this has gone through several iterations over the last five years. And this is my favorite iteration to date because uh, I actually worked with a printer to get these. They are cut and scored and printed, double-sided printed. And they are cut down. If you guys have been around a while, you remember that my original photo folders um, were a little taller. Do you guys see the difference there? Like they were a little taller. And, um, and so when you put the, the top on your power sort box, it kind of bent them down. And for some, that was never a problem for me, but I did get feedback saying, Lauren, you know, it'd be nice if we just took that little quarter inch off the top. So my printer does that. He cuts these down. These fit perfectly. The lid on the power sort box goes on perfectly. All that good stuff. And then not only that, but um, they also are now printed. So you've got all this kind of space inside with a dot grid. I don't know if you can kind of see that. And then it's scored. So basically to fold one, you just, I sit here, you know, and just fold a bunch of them at once. And so you just fold and fold. And then I, this is a little box I found at Daiso. You guys know I love my Daiso containers. Or, you know, you could just uh, get an empty pod from your power sort box and, and keep a stash in here as well. So you can see they fit perfectly in the pods for the power sort. So if you have an extra one, you can just keep them in there, uh, whatever works for you. But I do like to sit and kind of fold the whole thing at once. So one thing I want to mention is uh, 
there are, you know, I, I think photo organization really is also kind of like how we um, organize our scrapbooking projects. And so I have been doing a lot of thinking about my POP, my progress on projects system, which kind of does go along in here with this. And um, I, I have kind of a refresh that's coming on that system because I still get a lot of questions on that as well. And so one of the things I have realized, you're going to get a little sneak peek of that. One of the things I've realized is really to simplify my album making, I was feeling overwhelmed and, and I did the whole video series and it was, you know, people we love and things we do and all of this stuff, but I was feeling overwhelmed on how to organize my photos, how to sort them, and also how to create my album projects. And so I, in a nutshell, kind of what I've realized is actually there's, there's two types of scrapbooks that I personally like to make. And one of them is pretty easy. It's a chronological scrapbook. So it's like this. Here's the Heinz family, 2003. You guys, if you've been watching some of my things, you know, I'm still continuing to go. This is the year that I've gone back to, to scrap. I've done a lot of scrapping. So this is chronological. I want a representation of what our family was like in the year 2003. And then... Um, you just go kind of win whatever order you want and scrap those pages. Now, one of the fun things about photo folders, and so this is really kind of the first way I use photo folders, and that is to organize and group photos by event. Okay, so by event, by, uh, you know, what you are taking photos of and different things like that. So, for example... I have one here called Kids in Yard, and then it has a, a box here for the date, one January of 2003. I have another one. My next one is Valentine's, February 2003. Now, what's really fun about these new folders is that it has a little box here that says Pages Scrapped. I love that box because then I know I have actually dealt with these photos. They are scrapped. And these are my extras. So everything left in here are extra photos that I can use however I want. Okay, so it goes uh, by date and then it could be something like, okay, this one says Adam's birthday. Oh, look, I scrapped those pages too. Oh, I'm feeling so good. Okay, uh, this one says bath time. Now, when I was going through, I was realizing that I had kind of two sets of bunch of photos of the kids at bath time and that was in March and then also in May. So I made a note on this folder that said it's bath time. That to me was kind of what I would scrap together. And so I combined them because I didn't need another folder. Like I didn't want to do a bath time in March and then go, oh gosh, here I'm doing it again in May, right? Like I could combine this into a double page spread and the fact that I'm categorizing helps me determine kind of how I'm laying out my pages, even in this form. So the first step then is generally grouping. And you can see I have a lot of photos in that folder, right? Now, I'll, I'll get into a little bit more of how else I use these folders. So the first pass in something like this really is general grouping. And I'm not too concerned with, you know, this page and that page yet. I'm going to share that in a minute. But it's more about just general grouping. Now, why is that so important? Because you touch it one time. Once. You touch your photos one time. And then you look and you write it down. So even in pencil, Ellen Kindergarten, Pet Show, Birthday. I've got some basic notes in here. It's a lot of photos and I get to go in and, and you can see I have not scrapped these photos, but I can go back in and uh, re-look and know, okay, this folder has Ellen's pictures in Kindergarten, Pet Show, and Birthday. Like, duh, right? I never have to look at a pod like this again and go, 
what's in here? <laughs> right? Again, like, oh, wait, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. What's in here? That used to drive me nuts because I touch my photos over and over and over again, trying to remember what was in here. So once I touch them one time, I write it down and now I can literally just flip through the titles on my folders and see what all the pictures were that I took for this year. Okay, so how do you do that? You basically then get all your photos into one place. That's also one of my biggest tips. Get all your photos into one place. I should also mention here that this box, this was my 2003 box. Basically, this took about 50 folders, and that's what I sell my packs of folders in is 50s. So I, I used about 50 folders to fill up the power sort box. And I still think the power sort box is one of the best ways of storing your photo. It's archival, it's photo safe, it's great for long-term storage. It's a perfect size. If you have photos that are a little larger, sometimes I'll just tuck them on the bottom, I mean on the side like here, or the lid has a pocket in it that um, you can also store. You guys have probably seen that. You can also store bigger uh, items in the lid of these power sort boxes. Okay, so categories. I have a box for my years by year. So these, like you saw, this was family 2003. I also have a box for my kids. So you can see this one's Adam's box. I have four of these for each of the kids. And then getting back to what I was saying, two different types of albums. So I scrapbook chronologically, but then my second type, and this is a very big category, is that I scrapbook by theme. And so this is what I'm kind of developing a, a new in my progress on project system is that really, I think just about everything outside of chronological is theme related. It really is. So I also have another box that is all about my theme albums. So if it's about my mom, Tennessee, travel, the pets we love, you know, some of those uh, how, you know, ha house renovation, all of those to me kind of come under the theme category. It could also, kids also kind of come under the theme category because they have a school album, they have a sports album, um, a, a music album, whatever it is that they're involved in. Those are all kind of in the category of theme and how we treat theme albums is a little different than how we treat chronological albums, in my opinion, right? And chronological can also include everyday moments or big moments uh, in, in those and all the different types of scrapbooking. But this is really kind of organized by date, which is chronological. This is organized by theme. And like I said, many, many, many different types of themes, right? It could be wedding, birthdays, Halloween, Christmas, December days is a, a theme type album. All of those are in the theme category. So we can organize our photos by those themes as well. Several themes can go into one box or you may have a box of, you know, an entire theme project that you're working on. For example, heritage, right? Which also may be a little combination of chronological as well, but really I kind of see heritage as a theme album as well. Um, because you might be dealing with families and ge certain generations together and so on. So how do we dig in, use these in those two categories between um, chronological and theme. And like I said, within the category of theme, we can have our kids. So if you have never kind of, sorry, <laughs> I'm to make a little room here. If you've never kind of seen me go through this process, it's really easy. So you have your folders, right? You have your box. I usually fold some of them, or you can just leave them like this and fold them as you do it. You're going to want to have a pencil. I always use pencil, and that's because 
there are times where I will reuse these folders, right? Um, you know, we have to kind of pay attention to that. If there's a chance to reuse them, I will. It's always nice to have a photo labeling pencil on hand. This is what you put on the back of your photos. Even if it's just scribbled on like that, you want to, uh, especially our older photos, our pre, our printed photos, uh, you, you want to have a date, hopefully associated with it. Now the folders will also help with that. Okay. So this is, this first category is really dealing with the backlog of pr printed photos. And so really I'm talking about film photos, things that when we got our photos printed, sometimes we got doubles, sometimes we got triples, sometimes we got quadruples of film because we didn't have the ability to just look on our screen and see what we captured and then edit and then pick which ones we want to print, right? So this is what you know, my backlog of printed photos. And I don't have them all organized, as you can see. I keep working through this as, you know, time goes on and as the process continues. So what I would do is take a look and go, okay, these are all, it looks like all these photos here are Adam's fifth birthday party. Okay, so this, all of these. So I've got my big stack of photos and I'm kind of just going through these. This looks like this was his birthday as well. Kind of when we, when we first woke him up and surprised him with happy birthday. So all of these similar theme, they all get grouped together. I'm really at this point, I can flip through and go, are there really any like terrible photos? Okay, pull them out, toss them. Or are there any photos that you go, oh no, I know I'm never gonna scrap that or I don't wanna keep it, toss them. I give you permission to toss your photos. I do. I have, I, you could see my trash. I have photos in my trash right now or shred them or do whatever you want with your photos. I give you permission because we cannot scrap all our photos. We just, we just, I don't know. I just don't think we can. So then once I have a category out of my big pile, I'll take this and sometimes I will just kind of loosely break them in half and put one on one side and one on the other. Now that's not the only time I separate by sides, but I'm going to share that in, in just a minute about my other process for that. So you can see here, I've got all those photos in the folder. Now I need to put some notes on here. So I'm going to say Adam's fifth birthday. And this was uh, February of 2004. Okay. So it could be as easy as that. That's all I'm doing right now. And then I'm going to slip this into his pod and then grab the next step stack and keep going. Really, I feel like that is kind of the first grab at going through our photos, right? So um, just kind of taking some general categories, like going, okay, these were just around the house. These look like, oh, these are Legoland. So let's group all Legoland together. That's another easy category to see. Let's see. That's all Legoland. This looks like it's SeaWorld and other things. So I can take these once again, grab my photos. And sometimes that's exactly what I'll do. I'll go, okay, these are all like, that's a good chunk of photos. Easy to categorize because this was Legoland. I'm going to put that in there and just do Adam, Legoland. And let's see when that was. It looks like, um, oh, September of 2004. Well, I'll have to check that out. Is it, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to put 9 2004 because those are really out of order if that's the case. So I can check on that, but at least now I know what that is and that can then go in the next. 
Now, then I might have some categories like this, like, oh, I only have a couple pictures of 4th of July, and I have some other, um, you know, miscellaneous shots. Let's see, these look like they're just kind of other um, around the house. So then what I'll do on categories like this is I'll kind of group several of these together within a time range. So if I can look and see these are, well, see, these were films, so I'm thinking all 2004, but maybe if I could figure out exactly when these were, I could um, say uh, April 2004. This, this, of course, was 4th of July. Or I could give it a more general category because I know this is the year 2004, right? And then I could do it, Adam, personality, right? So I may want to scrap pages like that because out of all these photos, there isn't enough of a category within this to create, you know, a couple two-page spreads. So does that make sense? So some of these I may group across time, but still within the category of my son, Adam, right? So this is just Adam personality. I may not put a date, a month up here. I could go back, I could get more specific, but then that might go in the front of his pod. And then whenever I find kind of one-off pictures, I can add those in the front of his pod into this personality category. Okay, so however you do it, the whole goal is when you touch your photos, once you touch your photos, you want to make a decision and you want to loosely group these. You can always get more specific when it gets to the point of you pulling these photos out and scrapping them. Now, that also brings me to another really important addition that I think needs to go in this process. And that is the addition of the dot grid story cards. And if you don't use these cards, I really recommend you get some little scrap pieces of paper or, you know, whatever it is. Um, these are for sale in my shop. They're in packs of 25. You guys know I love my dot grid. I always have my little box of dot grid. But here's the thing that I think is so important is on the back, these are double-sided. And, and this is why I created the story side of the dot grid cards. Now, most of the time when I put this into my album, I use the dot grid because I love journaling on dot grid, but the flip side is where the goodies are, the details. So what I would recommend is have a stack, whatever, dot grid, this, my story cards, pieces of scratch paper or whatever it is, and uh, go through and you could either take the note here or you can also, if there's more of a story that you want to remember, tuck it on the card. So um, I am al almost forgetting. Uh, okay, it looks like we had his birthday. Um, this was his sports theme. So Adam had a sports theme party at our house. And then whatever you could remember about that event. Now, here's why that's important. What if something happened to me and I am the only person who had the story about this event? If there's no even a pencil of a note written down anywhere, who's going to know? The story is gone. And I realize that that's what scrapbooking is for, is getting the story. But what if the, this that's still in, in waiting to be scrapped? So all of those photos that are still waiting to be scrapped, um, they need a place for the story. So you can, like I said, you could write the story on the folders. But here's the thing, if you do that, and, and that's totally fine, it's a lot harder to erase all of that if you want to reuse it. 
So that's one reason I also like the story cards is because you can just tuck that in and have a clear picture of what the story was. So if you are one of the keepers of the stories for your family, I would recommend just grabbing some notes and just even if it's little prompts to help you remember what it is that you want to scrap about those pages, add them in. And when I share the example of another way I use my folders, I'm going to be even a little more specific on that. And I'll, and I'll share how I do that because this was in 2004. My memory is a little foggy because I don't have any notes about the party. I, I can look back at the pictures. I can talk to my husband and I can talk to Adam and go, what do you guys remember? Um, and, you know, document it that way. But when I show you the newer way, you'll see how the story becomes even richer when you have more of that memory intact and you can get your story down. Okay, so the new edition photo folder, tuck in your story card, makes things. Then you can just flip it over and actually write what you want to say, write the journaling on the dot grid side, but you have some notes tucked in right with your photos from the get-go. Okay, so love this whole, that's the process, right? You have your, your notes for uh, little notes about the story, you have your cards, you have your stack of photos. Once you touch your photos, all I know now, I can just flip through and I'll go, oh look, I've already organized all those photos. Now I just have to go through the, the, the other six inches of photos in here and uh, just categorize those. So the more you do, the better you get at making those decisions, touching your photos once, putting them in here, and then you are set. Whenever I want to look at what pages I want to do next, it is so easy to flip and go, oh, um, let's see. Oh, we just got the, the, this life Valentine's kit. Oh, do I have, you know, have I done my Valentine's pictures or whatever it is? There's, you know, Tennessee, uh, Nashville embellishments. Oh, maybe I want to go and get my, um, Tennessee photos out and do a page with some Nashville embellishments, right? So, um, that's what I'm, you know, once you have those categories and all of that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, organized, it, it just becomes so much easier to create your pages. Whoops. I'm sorry, guys. I have to, forgot to put my do not disturb on. I didn't mean my watch to be dinging at you on. Okay. So that's the first, one of the first ways for dealing with your backlog of photos. Now I'm, I'm going to get to the chat. I promise I'll look at your questions, but the next thing I just want to go over is also how do we use the folders for current photos, right? So if you'll notice, so today I decided to print some photos that, um, these are from last week. We went to the Huntington Gardens. I had a day with um, my daughter and her roommate and my husband, and we, I took the day off. It was glorious. <laughs> and, um, and so we took some photos. So I decided to print those photos. I know that this is going to be, I, you know, I went through, selected the photos that I want, and now I have these photos picked out. So here's another way you can use photo folders. I can take a look at this folder and go, okay, if this were going to be a two page spread, I could say, all right, these, I like these, these are scenery photos. So these are gonna go over here. These are kind of people photos and they're telling the story. So maybe I want those on the left-hand side and here's some more scenery photos. So I can easily go, okay, maybe I'll take these. Those will be on my left-hand side of the page. And these will be on the right-hand side of the page. And you can see that I've also decided that um, I double printed them on a four by six because I don't necessarily need 
so many large photos of these. The smaller, the four by three format works well for some of these smaller photos. Now, what you don't realize is that there are, is a story behind these photos. And if it were five years from now, I might not remember the story, but because it was only last week, I have details that I want to add in here. And one is um, uh, we used my Christmas present and uh, for getting our breakfast. Okay, so there's a whole story that goes behind here. My husband and I were able to, a good friend of mine gave me a um, gift card for uh, Christmas. And so we, uh, she treated us to a wonderful breakfast. There's a whole story that goes along with that. And then, um, and in addition, there was another gift card to go to one of our favorite coffee shops in Pasadena, and it's called Mandarin. And so here's the photo that shows the coffee shop and then the coffee that I got, again, compliments of this friend. Now, just looking at those photos, you would not know the story behind that, right? But if I made a note on my story card that that's what these photos were about and that um, the other thing that was very interesting to me, I love the bonsai garden at the Huntington Gardens. And uh, it was a very different experience walking through that in January than it was the last time I was there, which was in May. And things are a lot more dormant. There were only, of course, the camellias were all in bloom. It was gorgeous. The camellias were gorgeous. And so and writing the story behind the difference in how the bonsai uh, garden looked, again, looking at these photos, I may not remember that that's the story that I want to tell with these photos. But if I write that down, you know, how different the bonsai garden looked. Those are the details that make our storytelling that much more rich. You know, that's that much more enjoy, enjoyable and triggers our memory, triggers the emotion, triggers all of that, uh, that takes you back to that experience is when you can remember those little details. Um, I did not spell Christmas right. <laughs> Forgot the M, which is always good for pencil. Um, there we go. Um, so, so use, use these cards or notes or however you want to do it, tuck them in. And so then now I've got my story prompts. I have, uh, Huntington Gardens. And this was January of this year, 2024. Okay. So I have that. Now, this is where I would also, um, if I had a particular sketch that I wanted to try, I could make a note on here. If there was a video reference or if there were supplies that I thought, ooh, that would be kind of fun to use, you could really go all in and use these folders uh, to get pretty specific on what you want to do with these pictures as a layout. But the other thing I want to remind you is that if you, I find that some of my, sorry, uh, more recent um, print on demand photos, this is what happens when I'm done scrapping the page. It's empty. <laughs> my folders are empty. So I want to also just, and, and the same thing will happen here. When I'm done scrapping this page, my folder will be empty because I only, I'm going to write the story on the back of this, and I only printed enough to create those pages. Most likely it'll be empty. So in this case, that is the prime opportunity to grab your eraser 
and reuse these folders. So I just want to kind of say, you know, if you use them and you go, oh, I'm going to scrap those right away, the just using pencil helps you recycle and reuse these little guys so uh, you can be ready for the next set. So I'll just come in here since I've already scrapped those pages, they're done and complete. I can just erase what I used it for the first time and tuck that right back into my storage box and I'll have that ready for my next set of photos. Okay, so that is the process kind of something a little different for in-demand photos, I mean on-demand photos, right? Current digital photos, this is kind of more my process, but really getting into the backlog, as you saw, this was my process, bigger groups, bigger themes, because I just have so many photos. So a little different way to use them, but once again, this can go into my uh, family box by year and sit there and wait for me to scrap those photos. Okay, so in order to celebrate photo organization, I have put the photo boxes that I have on hand in my shop on sale for 30% off. So I don't have very many, but I do have um, you know, a, a good, good selection. I also have in my shop the photo folders and the dot grid cards. I'm getting close to the end of this print run for my folders, so the numbers are accurate. And uh, once they are gone, I'm gonna have to, or I need to get in process to do another print run for the folders. So uh, you can see there's two listings for those. You can get them in a pack of 25, you can get them in a pack of 50 and save $5, or you can get them in a pack of 200, um, no, a pack of 100, two packs, and save $5. Or you can get them in a pack of 200, which is four packs, and you can save $20. Okay, so there you have it. Let's go to the chat and answer questions, questions. Okay. So um, I am at the bottom, so uh, let me just kind of go from the bottom and I'll scroll back up. So Beverly has a question. The photo printer that I used, I have two that I highly recommend. The one that I used for these photos is the little Epson PM400. I always have it stashed. I'm going to just unplug it. It's, it's tiny. It's just right here. And it's always right next to me on my uh, craft table. So you can see, you take the paper out and it's, that's it. That's how big it is. This prints up to five by seven. It, to me, it's all about the printer, the ink and the paper. The paper is the Red River paper, my favorite. It's linked on my website but this is my go-to all the time. The 60 pound polar mat, um, four by six pictures. I buy these by the, <laughs> by the hundred packs, right? So it's the paper, the Red River paper and the Epson PM 400. And the other crafter printer I have a whole video on and that is the Canon crafter printer. And that is, um, if you want larger format. So if you want to print eight by 10, eight and a half by 11, 12 by 12, it has the borderless drivers. So I have both of the printers. So I use them differently. Most of the time I just print on my little Epson, but I love having my Canon for bigger photos when I need them. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So you, Kim says she has a large project with multiple years of annual party we used to host. Yeah, absolutely. So you could take the folders and it could be um, by year. I don't know how many pictures you have by year, but you could just do um, the event and then the year, and then you'd have them all organized and you could just go and grab whatever, you know, next, next year you want. To me, the most important thing about 
folders is that you have all those details written down. And so once again, you just can flip and look, you know, write it down once and it's always done for you. Okay. Um, and Tanya says she was blessed. Her mother-in-law labeled all her photos. Um, yes, but she had labeled them. And that is so great when we have even the, the, the most faded little bit of writing can help us uh, with, with some of those stories. So Tina says, how do you take a pot of pictures to a crop? Last time her pictures fell out and you thought they were tight in my bag. Tina, um, I am hoping there has been talk. I am hoping, hoping that this product is going to come back. Um, there was a lot of talk about it and you might be able to find these on eBay. Uh, but this used to be, uh, this was a cover that they used to have. And I know sometimes we had these, also these used to come in, in threes, right? Like the, just where you put three pods in so they're easier to transport. Then they came with the covers, which I love these covers. And then you could just transport one pod at a time. Now, um, like I said, I think maybe they're looking into re bringing this back. If you guys like that idea, oh, please tell customer service that you want this product back because your vote helps. Not just, you know, me talking about something, but your vote really does help. But they had little elastic things that you just pulled down. And so that kept the top secure. So in the meantime, I would probably do something like that. Put some kind of a cover on here and then band it up so that they don't oh, like that, right? End up upside down and all over your bag. Um, okay, let's see. Belinda says she used to hate the photos of everyone lined up, but when inherited your grandmother's photos, you could flip them over and see the names of people. Yeah. See, you had another one who labeled. That's so awesome. Um, and Carrie loves the folders. Thank you. Um, Let's see. People are no longer with us to tell. Yeah. Um, Julie says, ever since she owned a camera, she's always documented on the back because years from now, no one is going to remember. That is something my parents and grandparents didn't do. I know. We, I think we all have dealt with that. Um, Sherry says she needs an input. She has um, her parents' black and white photos of their early 60s trip to Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> How do you decorate those pages uh, colorfully? I I think I would go definitely to the new, uh, you know, um, Adventure Parks collection. And, uh, you know, black and white to me is just a really nice base. Like, I don't think when you have black and white pictures, you have to use black and white products. I love adding color and contrast. So that's the one I would go to. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, Belinda, the Batman building. I know it's in the embellishments. The Batman building is in the skyline. I love it. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, oh, that's so perfect. I love that they put that in there. Um, okay. And let's see. Any other questions? Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, love the folders. Just pop a cue in if you have any questions, but I'm just kind of scrolling. Um, let's see. Time goes by so fast. Yes. Shirley's like, just folded 50 last night. <laughs> Good. You can you can get going on organizing too. So, um, all right. And I'm so glad so many of you think have said that you love the folders. So, and good morning, my Aussie friends. Deborah's here from Sydney. Go, so good to see you guys. Um, and Teresa's here. Yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> she's like, I already got them. I already got those products, Lauren. So, um, just a quick, uh, let's see any questions, pop them in the chat. Uh, while you're doing that, let me just do a quick screen share and let's see if that's going to work.
Yep, there it goes. So uh, anyone who is not familiar, I have a website. It is called craftsomejoy.com. And on my website, you can see um, this is actually, I'm going to go to the homepage. This is the homepage. It says big hello. And there's a picture of me with my photo folders in the background. How about that? <laughs> um, so it, under the shop tab in the main navigation, you'll see Scrap Some Joy Shop. Every week I will put a new featured product up. So you can see this week is all about getting organized and all in stock power sort boxes are now on sale for 30% off. That is just what I'm doing every week. I want to feature something and just say, hey, try it, get it, see if you like it, and I'm going to give you a good discount on it. Um, and if you like the idea of having those folders in there, grab some photo, photo folders to go with it. And then um, I'm also extending last week's feature product, which was ABCs, and those are still um on sale for 30% off uh, until the end of day. And then if you've never been in my shop, uh, you can see at the very beginning, you can, um, there are gifts. So I always, a way of thanking you for shopping on my website is that, hey, I wanna give you stuff for free. So anyone who's ordered with me knows there's always a little something fun in your box. And you can also tell me specifically Yes, I want the Bold and Slate paper pack because I spent $125. Yes, I want that new sketchbook. Um, I'm brand new here. I want to see what your samplers are. You can get a sampler of my story cards and the photo folders and some layering shapes. And then I do have my blog guide that is free with a $175 purchase. And yes, they stack. So um, I've had a, a few of you who have said, oh, I want them all. I'm going to add them all to the cart and uh, do some shopping. So uh, when you keep scrolling down, you can see the power sort box is now on sale. Photo folders are here. There's the bulk pack. Um, and those have to ship in a box because there's so many and they are so heavy. And then the photo folders here, you can choose from uh, a set of 50 or 100. So, uh, and then there's the dot grid cards. All right. Um, so that's where you find the things that I've been talking about. You can also, of course, um, let me come back to you here. You can also get your own power sort box. If you are an advisor or you shop with someone else, you can get the power sort box at creativememories.com. They are still available, but the photo folders are uh, an exclusive to my shop. So I hope that helped. And I hope getting your photos, getting that first step done, I'm in it with you. As you could see, I have, where's my big stack? I have a big stack here. <laughs> pictures. That's what I'm going to do today. Do it with me. Let's take 15 minutes today and just grab a stack of photos and put them into folders. And then guess what? You never have to do that. You never have to flip through and go, what are those photos? Like, what, are, what is it that I need to get my head around in order to scrapbook? It'll be done. It'll be organized. And uh, you touch it once and it's, and it's done for you. And then you just get to go into the fun part, which is creating your pages and scrapbooking and all of that. So I will be having more on my pop process because as I mentioned, I'm in the process of redoing that. So what do I do after I have them all in my power sort box? Stay tuned because I'm going to have some new products to share about that process before my next pop crop. And this coming pop crop, which is on the second Saturday of February, that will be my new talk because we are going to talk about the pop process and uh, all things like what's what's new? What are we doing now? OK, so I hope you can join me if you are a member or you can uh, always look into being a member of my pop crop. OK, I'm going to scroll back down, see if there are any other questions that popped in. Uh, Irene says, do I have any of the, oh, the Daiso containers that fit in the pod? I bought the polka dot one. Oh, yes. So right now, um, 
I don't have those separately in my shop. They're super bulky and they take up a lot of room. So I only actually buy the pods that I have for my, um, the, uh, what are they called? The small flex pods. I have the, I, I match them up. So if I have a pod, I have the containers for it. And that's kind of what I stock in my, in my shop. My shop is super small guys. It's a tiny little bedroom. Um, since my daughter moved out. So I just don't have the space to buy those in massive quantities, unfortunately. Okay. Um, and the alphas, if you are just buying alphas alone, Belinda, they do not require the box shipping rate. You can get those. I can fit those in a legal flat rate envelope. And Mary's here. Hi, Mary. Okay. <laughs> I know, Tina. I am working, I am still, every time I sit down to try to figure out shipping to Canada, I think what, it, it's just not, like here in the U.S., I can say, it's a flat rate box. You pay this price. Whenever I look up shipping flat rate box in Canada, it's like $35. And I just think, oh my gosh, that's so much. And then, it, you know, Canada is just so big. So I don't, I'm still trying to work it out have to say, have to say. So Kathy, thank you for liking and sharing. And I would appreciate that. If you enjoyed today's little tidy up, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment if you're, especially if you're catching the replay. Always love to see what you're thinking and enjoying as well. So I hope you uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday. I will be live this Friday. It is Friday night scrapbooking. And I, I was sweating it out a little bit there because I had jury duty yesterday. So I, it was a little quiet here. Um, so uh, I did get selected on the panel and then they excused me at the end of the day, said, no, we don't quite need you. So uh, I am back to being available for you all here. So thank you again for joining and I will be with you live on Friday at five for Friday Night Scrapbooking. I hope you all can be there. Everyone is invited and I look forward to seeing you. I have this big surprise because I have a brand new product that I'll be sharing on Friday too. Okay, have a great rest of your day. And until next time, I hope you take time to craft some joy. Bye for now. See you soon. <laughs>